Well, he was a Church of Scientology mastermind, the mouthpiece for the cult's global operations, one of the inner circle. But now he's left and speaking for the first time about how the church works. It's explosive stuff and the power brokers of Scientology want to silence him. Tonight, Brian Seymour continues his investigation with this world exclusive report. OK, here's where it gets really weird. Oh, I know he's evil. He's definitely evil. This gentleman's been hired by a law firm acting for Scientology to film these people. Is that OK? Uh, no, it's not. No, listen to me! You are not there! At the beginning of that interview! I certainly make clear to John Sweeney and the people at, at the BBC and Panorama what really happened. We want you to know who we are and what we stand for. How close is he with Tom Cruise? Extremely close. How close? Unnaturally extremely close. Mike Rinder is Australian. He was born in Melbourne and grew up in Adelaide, just two doors down from cricket greats, the Chapel Brothers. After more than three decades at the top of Scientology International, he left in 2007. This is his first broadcast interview. No, I'm not stopping no. here. You listen no. to me for a second. No. Remember this screaming match between Scientologist Tommy Davis and BBC reporter John Sweeney? You've since spoken with John Sweeney. Did you, did you apologise to him? Did you absolutely. explain all of this? What did you I, say? I absolutely. I apologised to him. Mike Rinder was right there as Tommy Davis played out Scientology's plan. Tommy Davis had, had basically said priorly, look, I'm the guy that can goad Sweeney into losing it. And that was what Tommy Davis was trying to do. Is that what he said? Absolutely. You, you were there, he said that was his plan. That was his plan. Mike Rinder was ordered to handle the global media fallout from the BBC Panorama documentary, Scientology and Me. To your knowledge, did, did the church release it? No, Anderson. I mean, I'm not sure how that got onto YouTube. You have to lie because there's nothing else that you can do. You can't stand on TV and say, oh, yeah, David Miscavige beat people up. Or, yeah, oh, yeah, we forced them to disconnect their families. Now, Rinder says he's sorry for lying and he's telling the truth in an effort to stop the abuse. Chris, the cameraman, first popped up in a restaurant. Are you with the Church of Scientology? No, no, no. OK, what's your name? My name's Chris. Chris told us he was flown out from Los Angeles by a lawyer who works for Scientology International. His assignment? To follow Mike, his partner Christy and me. Right. Do you know who I am? Yeah, you're Brian uh, Seymour. So the Church of Scientology has sent young Chris here to document my reporting on the Church of Scientology. And why would you need to do that? I don't, for legal reasons. I don't know what the legal reasons are. What would the legal reason reasons be, Chris? I have no idea. You have no idea what you're, you say, I have no idea what you're doing, but you're getting paid to do it and you're going to well, do it. I know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing it. We all know who this is. Less known is his best friend, who happens to be the leader of Scientology. He's the equivalent of the Pope in Scientology. He's the, the leader, he's the absolute authority. That's correct. He likes to call himself the, the equivalent of the Pope. Unlike the Pope, who reigns over his faithful through a shared belief of divine providence, Rinder claims Scientology's leader, David Miscavige, uses fear and brutality to control. How often would he lose it? How common was this? You know, a couple of times a week. When Mike Rinder first joined Scientology, he served the founder, L. Ron Hubbard, when he lived on a ship. Then he was promoted by David Miscavige to head the International Office of Special Affairs, the department in Scientology that handles critics and the media. The Church of Scientology International has launched a major campaign to try to stop this story. They say David Miscavige never assaulted Mike Rinder or anyone else, and they've given us a wad of information they claim proves Mike Rinder is a liar and that he assaulted his ex-wife. They also claim that in 2002 Mike Rinder was sacked from his job for violations of fiduciary duty and malfeasance. Sounds serious, doesn't it? So why then, two years later, in 2004, was Mike Rinder back with his old job title representing Scientology, shoulder to shoulder, with David Miscavige. And to brief you on that front and the next step in implementing LRH Tech from the top down, please welcome Mr. Mike Rinder. Hey. 
here, David Miscavige introduces his trusted lieutenant, Mike Rinder, to a 2004 Scientology event. Rinder claims David Miscavige physically assaulted him many times. David Miscavige, the leader of Scientology, creeping up behind you and strangling you. Did that happen? Absolutely. It happened more than once. He's a very volatile personality. He will lash out for uncalled for reasons. This incident was witnessed by another former Scientologist, Amy Scobie. She ran the Celebrity Centre in Hollywood before she escaped the cult. Amy says this assault happened in early 2001. All of a sudden, he just storms in and he grabs Mike around the neck. David Miscavige. David Miscavige grabs Mike around the neck and he starts strangling and shaking him and strangling and holding just this grip. And his face is turning colors and you could tell that he couldn't breathe. His eyes are just bugged out. And then he takes him and he throws the chair down, it throws him by his neck down onto the, the ground and the chair toppled over too. Rinder admits he too was violent, along with other managers in Scientology. For we today shall marry here this groom and bride. Here, Mike Rinder presides over the wedding of his friend Marty Rathbun, another former high-ranking Scientologist. Scientology accuses these two of having a kinky relationship and of blaming David Miscavige for their own violent behaviour. David Miscavige never hit anyone, it was you and Marty Rathbun. That's exactly right. Who dealt out the savage beatings and... That's exactly right. I you've mean, admitted to hitting people. Absolutely I have, so has Marty. And why did Not you do that? It. Why did you do it was that? A, it was part of the culture. I mean, I mean, I know for a fact, because I was standing there when Miscavige told Marty, and he's told Tom DeVocht, I watched him say, if you don't go down there and whack that guy upside the head, I'm going to go down there and do it, and then I'll do it to you. You admit to lying then. How do we know you're not lying now? I feel like if people understand and know that I am telling the truth, then that's really all I can do. Well, have you made a complaint to police? I and can't if, And if not, that. why not? I can't. Is that because uh, it's pending an investigation? You can't comment? If you want to... Yeah, exactly. Who's your favourite celebrity Scientologist? Do you have one? John Travolta. Pretty easy, isn't it? I, I, he's, a, he's a wonderful guy. You mentioned Kate Sobrano, one of uh, our oh, I think Kate most favourite also... celebrities. I mean, I've known Kate for a long, long, long time. I think she is incredibly talented. And I do care so very, very, very much. I have flown on Tom Cruise's private jet with him many times. It wasn't because I had a private jet, it was because he was going and I was going to the same place that he was, so I would ride along. I didn't have a, a, a car, I didn't get paid a lot of money, I got $50 a week, I didn't, I owned practically nothing. Movie megastar Tom Cruise has it all. Millions of dollars, a beautiful wife and child and Scientology, but even more, he is best friends with its leader. How close is he with Tom Cruise? Their relationship is something that doesn't really make sense. BFFs. Best friends forever? Yeah. How long before we see someone like Tom Cruise leave David Miscavige, leave the Church of Scientology? I don't know, Brian. Hopefully very soon. They're interested in, can they suck money out of you for these other programs? Despite Scientology's claims that Miscavige doesn't have a house and instead lives communally and very moderately, Rinder maintains that David Miscavige lives a life of luxury, funded by money raised for Scientology that is supposed to go towards helping the needy. His own chef, massages, personal trainers, motorcycles, apartments, living quarters, uh, tickets to NASCAR races, Acuras, BMWs, private jet, cases of scotch, uh, big screen TVs, unlimited financial resources. He lives in a building on uh, Hemet Gold Base, yes? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes. Yes, several. All those things that you just recited are absolutely things that he has. He considers that those are his right. 